Good Monday morning. Hope you guys are off to a good day. We had a great conversation this morning in our elders meeting, um, talking about life here at Westway Christian Church. Um, talking about, let's see, let's see what we talked about today. Um, Yeah, we talked about lots of things. Some of the things I could talk about, or actually most of them I can't. Um, talked about our uh, status update for our creative arts pastor search. That's going well. Um, talked about some other things that we're doing here, some other internal leaders and for our, for our church leaders and, um, you know, just about uh, having real relationships about... Um, what we're dealing with in our lives and how we can be there and support one another and it was just um yeah it was just encouraging um it was an encouraging conversation so um i don't feel like we got all the way through uh where we were in philippians last week and in philippians 4 and i'm a loser and i didn't write down how far we got so i'm gonna have to take a quick peek at last week's last video to see where we ended up because um, I feel like we only got through the first few verses of chapter 4 so you're gonna have to bear with me because um, I did not look and see where we were this morning in this so I am so sorry about that um, so let's take a quick uh, let's take a quick look here okay we did we finished the first three verses of, um, of chapter 4 <clears throat> so Mondays are a little bit shorter um, because Mondays are a little bit later. Um, so I'm just going to read this morning. We're just going to read Philippians 4, verses 4 and 5. Just two verses. Um, it'll be quick. It'll be brief. Um, but I think it has, um, has some really good, um, I don't want to say advice, because the Bible is not just um, not just a matter of good advice. Because I don't know I don't know about you, um, but when you when you hear you know someone ask for advice or give advice, advice is kind of one of those. I have this injury, um, and when I do that, I'm going to get lots of advice, and I am going to decide. Um, whether or not I'm going to follow their advice. So the Bible is not advice. The Bible is uh, instruction um, in 1 Timothy um, 3.16. Paul, um, Paul says, uh, actually 2 Timothy 3.16, my bad. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 Paul tells Timothy this, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what's true and to make us realize what's wrong with our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what's right. God uses it, scripture, to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That is not advice. The Bible is not giving us advice. It's giving us teaching and uh, correction and rebuking and training, um, it's giving us commands. So, um, so let's read um, not advice from Paul, but let's read an instruction from Paul. This is Philippians 4, verses 4 and 5. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is is coming soon. So that's not advice. We could say this is a command. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all that you do. So how can we be full of joy? What is what does being joyful look like for us? Um, I know we talked about this a number of times when we went through Psalms last year. Um, being joyful in the Lord does not mean that we ignore reality. 
right? Being joyful in the Lord doesn't mean we doesn't mean we put on a happy happy face mask and we don't um, we don't take seriously the hardships and realities and the situations and the circumstances of this world. Um, and we know those are many, but being joyful means that we, um, sort of like Paul in prison. We don't let our situations and circumstances and our hardships and realities um, drive, um, drive us. We don't get so caught up in those things that we cannot see, um, that we can't see what God is doing, that we can't find joy, that we can't find hope in that. Because our joy isn't found in our circumstances. You know, I think of so many people... Um, so many people in this world who their their joy is found in their circumstance. It's really easy to be joyful. It's really easy to be happy. It's really easy to be excited when everything is going well. It's not so easy to be joyful and happy and excited when things aren't going well. And this really comes down to for us what where is our hope? In what is our hope? Where is our hope? In whom is our hope? And as Christians, if we were to just go back and read all the way through Philippians, I said I was going to keep this short, so I've got about another two minutes, I promise. If we were to go back through the book of Philippians and, and, see, um, and see the instructions that we find there, we have so many reasons to be joyful. We are not citizens of this world, but we are... Um, we're citizens of heaven. So my joy, my, my, I'm not going to say happiness, I'm just going to say my joy. My joy is found not in my circumstances, but my joy is found in the person of Jesus. Always be full of joy in the Lord. That is the statement. That is the command. Because when I'm because when I'm focused on Jesus and when I'm focused on what God has for me, I'm going to find my joy and my hope and my trust in God. I'm not going to find it in other things. Because we all know that all of the other things in which we, we place our hope, in which we place our trust, maybe it's our bank account, maybe it's our jobs, maybe it's our um, relationship, um, if we are... Um, if we're married, we you know a lot of times people will put their hope in their tr their hope in their spouse or their hope in their kids, and we know that we we have been let down by all of those things in so many ways. So when our hope and our joy is in those things, we're only asking to be let down. We know this from the last eleven months, right? The things that we placed our hope and trust in have only let us down. But when our joy is in the Lord, he never lets us down. He's always with us. And I think that's how Paul was able to be in the situation that he was in and still tell people about Jesus. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. So we are called to be joyful people. This is not advice that we decide whether or not we're going to be obedient to it based on our circumstance. This is a command. This is a way of living. So that it says everyone will see that we are considerate in all that we do because the Lord is coming soon. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for you that you will find joy in all that you do, that you will be joyful despite all of the things that happen around us because of who God is, because of what he's done, what Jesus has done for us, for you and for me on the cross, that we can find meaning and purpose and we can be joyful because of who God is and what he's done in our world and what he has done in our own lives. So let's pray together. God, I'm thankful for your word this morning. I'm thankful for this reminder that we are to be joyful in Christ Jesus in all things. We ask for the strength and the courage and the desire and the will to do that. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.
Tomorrow we'll be back at our normal time of 7 a.m. Um, we're going to continue reading through Philippians chapter 4. I want to encourage you, as I've done um, throughout this little series, read the entire book. Uh, um, we're to the point where it'll probably take you 15 or 20 minutes. Um, but I want to encourage you to read through uh, the book of Philippians um, and let its truth um, speak speak truth and speak love and speak joy into your own life. So I love you guys. I'm praying with you, praying for you. Thankful for this time each, um, each morning. And I will see you tomorrow morning um, at 7 a.m. as we continue our time together. See you. Have a great rest of your day.